Oh, hello. We're almost back to normal. It's less than a week since last time we're in the man cave, but welcome anyway. Mullenbike is man cave, of course. First of all, I've got to get, say a big thank you to those really supportive comments I've got after my last my last video. I was getting a bit negative, I suppose, really, and trying to work out the best way of doing things, but the upshot of it is I don't need to change anything. I don't intend changing anything after what people have said, so. Either way, we're back, and um, it's effectively the last of the Northumberland videos. Um, this time we're kill the forest, kill the water, and a sneaky trip over the border. But I totally forgot, um, there's a little bit in this video that's a little bit more in my background. The little bit I was involved in the search after the Lockerbie um, air disaster. Um, it's there, anyway. Have a look, see what you think. Again, um, give us a thumbs up if you like it. Let me know if you don't. Um, and in the comments, of course, I always look forward to reading comments and replying to them. So, yeah, see what you think. And, uh, and let me know. Thanks for watching. Anyway, cheers. Welcome back. You joined me for the run into Bellingham, uh, just a couple of miles up the road. Bellingham is where, well, it's where I'm going to stop for a cup of tea. And uh, it's where we turn off to go up into Keel the Forest and to Keel the Water. This is an absolutely tremendous road in absolute beautiful conditions. I didn't even dare hope that it was going to turn out like this to be honest. Bellingham in front of us. This takes me back to the first time I ever came to Bellingham was 1988. Uh, back in those days I was um, I was in Mountain Rescue. I was in the uh, in Buxton Mountain Rescue team and 1988 The Lockerbie air disaster, the Lockerbie bombing, whatever you want to call it. The authorities asked every rescue team in Britain if they could send any volunteers to help with a search. <coughs> and I volunteered, obviously. Spent a couple of days up here. Um, and there were various different search areas and the search area we were uh, we took on was based around Bellingham so we actually came to Bellingham Village Hall for our briefing and we took different areas of Kielder Forest and it's it's something that I'll never forget. I won't mention what we actually found, but when you find a little kiddie's teddy bear hanging in a tree, it sort of brings it home as to just what the situation was.
That's the River North Tyne, by the way. It's the Tyne that runs through um, through Newcastle. Is the culmination of two rivers that join together near Hexham, the North Tyne and the South Tyne. And this one, the North Tyne, actually runs out of Kielder Water, the reservoir, which we'll have a look at in a short while. But for the time being, I'm going to be stopping here in Belgium, hopefully to get maybe a sandwich and a cup of tea. And that was the village hall where we had our briefing. Oh, terrible situation. Well, the Rocky Road Cafe was very, very nice. So now we're heading off to uh, Kiel the Water. So we're uh, we're half an hour away from. Kill the water, basically. Where are we going? We're going to enter Kill the Forest, um, which is one of the largest man made woodlands in Europe, and then run alongside Kill the Water, which is the largest man made lake in Britain by volume. So, I'll switch off for now um, and switch back on as we come into Kielder the Forest. See you later. Well, you rejoin me just as we enter Kielder the Forest. Like I said, this um, Kielder the Forest, this is one of the largest man-made woodlands in Europe. And you can see how far it stretches and this to our right this is the dam on the right here to kill the water over 44 billion gallons of water in there which makes it the largest man-made lake in Britain by volume Ruckham water is actually larger by surface area It is a water supply, it's killed the water, but it's a, it's a great centre for water sports and diving and such activities. And the forest itself is, um, offers some great facilities as well. So we'll have a look at Elkirk viewpoint, it's somewhere I've never been to. I'm hoping it will give us a nice view out over, over Kielder Water.
Just give us a nice view over Kielder Water. Photo time. Photo is taken. So we'll head north up to Kielder Castle now. Kielder Forest is what's known as a dark sky park um, because there's no light pollution at all within the forest and around the lake, around the water. So up to our left, up in the trees, is a public observatory and you can actually book the telescope um, to use yourselves in actual fact. They tend to uh, encourage parties to go, not celebrating parties but groups of people to go up there to make use of the, the facilities and just at the minute it would be a great time to be here in the, during the hours of darkness These are the upper reaches of Kielder Water now, up the north end. To the best of my knowledge, there was only one hamlet that was drowned by uh, Kielder. And that was uh, the hamlet of Yarrow. Now I can't remember if we can actually get up here by vehicle. Because up here is um, the public observatory. No. Oh well, it's worth a try.
many of the trees on the left here. This is Kielder Village. And we've got to carry on up to Kielder Castle. Once a year they have a, a classic a classic vehicle rally or um, get together here in the grounds of the castle. So that's killed the castle as you can see across there. Um, built in 1775, the original castle was anyway. It was built as a hunting lodge for the, Duke, the first Duke of Northumberland. Um, it's been added to since and it's now a visitor centre for, um, for Kielder in general. So that's Kielder Castle. Now we're going to go to take a little ride through the forest, to the top end of the forest, on the forest drive. So that's our ticket purchased. We'll take a run along the forest drive. It starts off as tarmac but quite a lot of it is um, unsurfaced. So it's ideal for four wheel drives and uh, adventure style bikes like the humble Himalayan, like Blizzard here. And this is something I wanted to do for quite some time. That's more like it. That's what we used to. This takes us across through the forestry and out onto the A68, uh, which is the road that leads up to the Scottish border at um, Carter Bar. Now, unless I'm mistaken, there are one or two sculptures across here on the way across, so what I'll do is I'll switch off for now and uh, I'll switch on again when we come to any of the sculptures. Well, that was a J just flew over. Oh, welcome back, by the way. The most colourful member of the Crow family is the J. You probably didn't see it on the camera anyway. This is lovely across here. And what you're looking at across on the right is, is it's another example of what sort of a county Northumberland is. You've got the coastline. We looked at the coast yesterday, which is a beautiful coastline. Um, but there are so few towns away from the coast. It's it's a during the winter, uh, the Northumberland moors are bleak, inhospitable area. But on a day like today, it's just it's just beautiful. Um, it's a lovely place to ride through. And this forest drive is uh, <laughs> is a great facility. And it's something I've I wanted to ride through for many years. Driven past the far end on the A68 so many times with the coach and seen the signs for the forest drive.
Well, the wee sign back there said another six miles of this before the A68. Here we are. I knew there was one somewhere. Nice bit of roadside art. Lake Hope Nick, 1500 feet above sea level. Photograph time. Just a bit special. Not me, the surroundings. Go a bit further. We're not far off the A sixty eight now. And it's the A68 that we follow, to begin with anyway, back towards Newcastle, eventually. It's been absolutely brilliant this has. Look at that rover. Behold, the A sixty eight. To the left lies Scotland, to the right lies Newcastle. Well it's just a main road this is so I've got to switch off for now and uh, switch back on at the next point of interest, wherever that may be. Welcome back. I did say I'll switch back on again when we came to a point of interest. And this is a point of interest, as you'll see. Brown sign gives us light, gives the game away. Did you honestly think I could come this far north, so close to the border, and not put at least a wheel over the border into Scotland? <laughs> Carter Bar. Scottish border. I think we'll stop for just a bit more than uh, a cup of tea here. Just look at that view. 
the Eildon Hills probably doesn't show up on the camera a group of rounded hills overlooking the, the town of Melrose over there and then we come back to the Cheviot Hills the, the highest of the Cheviots is the very rounded top the very flat top that's Cheviot itself fantastic view absolutely fantastic view So yes, we'll have a photo, and we'll have a brew. In Scotland. <laughs> Just. See you in a bit. That'll do for now. Cup of tea and a hot dog in Scotland time to accept reality and turn back back to Whitley Beer So that was the Scottish border at Carter Bar. So now we're just going to retrace our steps back into uh, back into Newcastle and uh, Whitley Bay. So we'll call it quits for this one, um, thanks for watching again, and uh, if you found it half as interesting and enjoyable as I, I found it today, it'll give us a like, and uh, again, if you've not already done so, if you can subscribe, that'd be great. Cheers for now, and see you in the next one.